Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics and in this video we're going to be taking a look at our two active tropical cyclones across the Atlantic. We have Hurricane Sam and Tropical Storm Victor and we will also be talking about the potential for us to have development possibly in the coming week and we'll also look at current conditions across the basin and so before I go into details. <music> Alright, so let us get start things with Major Hurricane Sam. So as of right now, Sam is located somewhat to the east, northeast of Bermuda. As you can see on satellite view here, we have it and there is this small island. And we're seeing here that Sam is basically breaking apart now because that shear is starting to take a toll uh, that we've been talking about for the past few days. And we have the Major Hurricane weakening. It is still a Major Hurricane, but it is weakening. So let's go on to that cone for and so here we have it and we're seeing here that Sam has maximum sustained winds of 130 miles per hour so it is still a category 4 hurricane but it is much weaker than it was yesterday. Yesterday it was at 150 miles per hour and now we have it being 20 miles per hour less in strength and it is accelerating to the north northeast at 17 miles per hour so by tomorrow it is expected to be downgraded to a hurricane from a major hurricane so category two and eventually we will have this dissipating by the midweek it should weaken down to tropical storm status but it is going to be post-tropical before that time so by the end of this week this might make its way near iceland as a post-tropical cyclone so if there is anything much really left of this then this could result in a bit of unstable weather conditions in iceland and so now let's go on to victor and we're seeing on satellite that we barely have anything left of this cyclone we might have some circulation but that shower and thunderstorm activity is certainly not there and so let's go on to the cone forecast for this and so we're seeing that victor has maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the west northwest at 13 miles per hour so it is expected to weaken down to a depression by very early tomorrow i wouldn't be surprised if it does so by tonight and then it is likely to become post-tropical by Monday and before the midweek it is likely to dissipate and become a remnant low out in the open waters of the Atlantic and so that is the good news with Victor it is not expected to be a threat to land at all and so now let's go ahead and take a look at conditions across the basin so first up let us talk about the wind shear so we have the different colors here that indicate the favorability of the shear we have the green that means favorable the yellow that means neutral and the red that means unfavorable so we can see here that unfavorable shear is extending across most of the uh, main development region the caribbean the gulf of mexico so it is really not very likely that we could have imminent development of any systems and we don't actually have any disturbances as of right now but that can change at any time and so in terms of the shear uh, once we have all that unfavorable shear we won't have much development because what it does is basically cut off the thunderstorms in our systems and prevent them from developing much that is pretty much what is happening with uh, Victor and Sam. So the unfavorable shear is definitely taking its toll on the major hurricane and so we're expecting that Sam is going to be weakening and as time is going to be progressing. And so let's go on to the Saharan dust map. So we're seeing here uh, that we have that pocket of Saharan dust that is headed westward. So whenever you see the light yellow that means that the dust is not very dense but as we head to that dark orange and the red shade that is when we have a lot of dust and so this prevents tropical cyclone development because it is dry air and it prevents moisture which is what our tropical cyclones need so without moisture we won't have any development or intensification of any systems and so this pocket of saharan dust that you're seeing just about to make its way over the lesser antilles is accelerating westward and so this could eventually be across most of the caribbean so the lesser antilles and the greater antilles probably portions of central america will be impacted by this as well so be prepared for some very hazy skies uh, as well as minimal rainfall as a result of the dry air and also if you have severe allergies it's good to keep yourself covered if you're going outside it's best to stay indoors as the Saharan dust is going to be making its way through and so 
this is going to be uh, impactful on what is to happen next week because we have the GFS still consistent about something developing by the early to mid part of the week. And so let us go ahead and take a look at what the model is expecting. All right, so this is a map showing the isobars and the isobars are lines of equal pressure. And so whenever you see them being in a circular manner with the pressure below 10, 13 millibars, that is a low pressure system and can be or trouble cyclones. And whenever you have the isobars which are the black lines being very close to each other or very tightly packed that indicates a very steep gradient which means that our tropical cyclones are quite strong all right so this is by wednesday the 6th of october so the middle of the coming week and so it is showing an increase in moisture in the vicinity of the caribbean and so as we go further out to friday the 8th we see that there is a 1004 millibar low pressure system just to the east of Belize. And so eventually the model shows that this is going to be making its way over Central America and probably redevelop in the Eastern Pacific. And so even though it has been consistent with something developing, it has been changing location and intensities first. We saw something developing near Jamaica going up to Cuba. Uh, potentially becoming a hurricane crossing over going up to the bahamas and there have been a lot of changes since then so even though it's consistent about something at least trying to develop it is not consistent with the intensity and the location and so those are bound to change as time goes by but as of right now these harren dust that is about to move across the region is likely to prevent any tropical development that is to happen because as i explained earlier it is dry air which inhibits moisture and that is something that our tropical cyclones need. So with a dry environment, conditions are way too hostile for us to have development of a tropical cyclone. And so guys, so far in this hurricane season, we have had 20 named storms. Uh, this time last year, we had, I believe, around 23, 24 named storms. And you can say that this season is considered to be a very active one. And things are not likely to be finished as yet. It's likely that we could have a couple more storms before the end of the season. The season officially ends on the last day of November. So we have just one name left on the list, which is one and it, what was in Vest 91L a couple of days ago was expected to develop but it failed to do so and so if we have any other tropical systems developing if we potentially have that one developing in the Caribbean that the GFS is consistent about then that will likely acquire the name Wanda once it achieves tropical storm status and then after that the list is going to be exhausted and we will have to go to our new auxiliary list which has 21 normal names that replace the greek alphabet and so we really have to wait and see what's going to be the eventual outcome as we head into the coming week and beyond that point and of course i will keep you updated as time goes by and so guys if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be with the wise